people sing unto the Lord. Open up your mouth and begin to tell him. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be worshipped. He's worthy. Praise the Lord. I'm gonna take this mask off. I'll stay away from y'all though. God's good. First, I want to give honor to God, who's been so good. He's been so good to me. He's been good to my family. You know, without him, I I don't believe I'd be here. I believe if he had to step in in my life at a time when I went through different seasons of my life, I don't believe I'd be here. Because I know there was one time I just wanted to give up and die. And I know the Holy Spirit rose up and said, not now. So I want to honor God and, and all that He is, everything that He is to us. So I want to uh, thank my pastor and his companion. Thank uh, Sister Jennings for asking me, giving honor to her and her, her spouse, her companion, uh, Katie, Brother Thomas, uh, Brother Young, Brother Crook, who else? I'm Brother Aaron, Sister Aaron, all the ministers, Sister Washington, Sister Hope, all the uh, the ministers. Anybody that I left out to all our deacons? I'm sorry. So, you know, I thank God for each of you. I thank God for, Sister Simmons said it, and I do it a lot too. I thank God for Jesus. I think about without Him, without Him sending Jesus to sacrifice to. You know, I really say it in the summertime when I feel that heat, Sister, Sister Simmons, I think, Lord, I thank you for Jesus that I don't have to go to hell because I don't know. If it's worse than the heat that we feel, that is some heat. So I thank God for Jesus. And I also thank him that he said he had to leave to send us a comfort. Amen. He said he had to leave. He said because as long as he stayed there, the comforter couldn't come. And the good thing about the comforter is that when Jesus was on earth, he could only be with who he could be with at that time. The Holy Ghost can be with each of us, all the millions and millions of people that have accepted Jesus and be with us, lead us, guide us, teach us, help us every day, every hour, through everything we go through. So I thank him for sending us the Holy Ghost. I, uh... I almost told Sister Jennings no <laughs> when she asked me. <laughs> Between school and uh, y'all keep my dad lift up in prayer. He, they put him in the hospital on Thursday. Thursday. I have to get my days right. And uh, trying to figure out what was going on with him. Some things have been going on with him for the last two or three months. So God is good. He's doing better. Thank God for him. And uh, Thank God that he's doing better. And they're, we're trying to, they're finally figuring out what's going on with him. So that was one of the big things. So he is doing better. Thank God for my mom, uh, whose uh, daddy said that he just appreciated her during the pandemic. So I'm going to give her her props today because he said she cooked, been cooking up a fire. And he said he don't complain. Whatever it is she cooked, he eat what's put before him. And uh, the pandemic really stopped their going, but praise the Lord, she stepped in and, and she's been good to him is what he said. He said, I don't know how I'm going to thank her, but so I thought I'd put that out for my mom. As I was talking to the Lord all week and being, I did a, what I call a brainstorming day. I took one day and I just wrote down everything the Lord gave me, kind of took notes and Went back and forth trying to see which way God would have us to go, have me to go. And I just went back and forth. And finally yesterday as I woke up early, the Lord began to minister to me. And I kind of 
it's been a lot of talk on it and just couldn't quite figure out which way. But if I had to give you a topic today, I would call it Use God's Words. And a, a subtopic would be to use Jesus. And I know that sounds kind of like, what? Use Jesus. But have you ever told somebody something, and I, I always can use my kids, I can say, uh, if I tell you something and, and one of your friends don't like it or something, you can always use me and make me the bad guy. Make me the person that, oh, uh, that was mama fault. You know, mama wouldn't let me go, or mama wouldn't let me do this, or mama wouldn't do this. It's always mama's fault. So we can use Jesus to that point to say, it is, it's not a fault, but it is because of him. And because of him, we can say Jesus. We can say in Jesus' name. We can say Jesus did it. There are three attributes of God that we normally think of. And one is omniscient. He's all-knowing. One is omnipotent, all-powerful. One is omnipresent means he's present everywhere at every time, all times. And we, most of us know these attributes we attribute to God, but a lot of people don't know the devil does not have those attributes. We look at him as thinking, since God is like this, we bring the devil up to a level that he's not supposed to be. And the reason I brought this out because even though God is all-knowing, the devil is not all-knowing. Right. He can't read your mind. That's right. He can't be everywhere at once. He has demons that he sent out to do his bid. Yeah. He's not omnipotent. He's not all-powerful. Right. He right. can't do what he want to do. That's actually, right. he has to actually get permission, right. whether through God or because we allow it. And because we we do that sometimes because we attribute godly things, characteristics to the devil. It makes us think that doing certain things are okay. One of the things that I noticed, uh, and I see one of my, my grandbabies here, uh, Dale, uh, when, you, when you're talking to kids and they get upset, or they're trying to tell you something. They want you to know, or they're crying, or you're trying to figure out what they're saying. They'll come to you and they'll cry. You're trying to figure out what's going on with them. And one of the things you would say is, we say use words. Use words. I cannot know what's going on without you, about you, without you telling me what, what's going on. And we as Christians have a habit of we'll use our words and repeat what's going on with us, but we don't use the word of God and say what it needs to be. We need to begin to call things that be not as though they are. I'm reminded of the good times, the show that I watched some years ago, and I don't know if any of y'all ever remember it, and it was a particular show, and it was a particular, uh, I want to say it was a political person on there that came on the show for whatever reason, and he would never like to get into conversing with people and going back and forth, and they called it the dozens. They said, we're going to have a war of the dozens. Y'all, that, uh, that age me, it's probably very few of y'all understand, but it's when you say something and I come back with something just as fast. And what we got to know as Christians, we really need to be able to play the dozens with the devil. But we need to be able to come back with the word of God. I heard Kirk Lodala say, the word of God is activated through our words. We've been sitting and we've been waiting and wondering what's going on. And we don't understand because the Word of God is activated through our words. Our faith is released through our words. I heard a pastor say, he said, I am healed. When he said that, he released his faith and let the enemy know 
It ain't going to work no more. I am healed. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The Word has always been. And it always will be. We need to begin again to understand the place that it has. That God has given it in our life. The reason he placed such importance on it. John 1 and 4 says, In him was life and the light of me. In the New Living Translation, it says, The word gave life to everything that was created. And his light brought life to everyone. The word... In the Greek, it's called Logos. This particular word is called Logos. And it's, it's, the definition of it is something said. A subject of discourse, written or spoken communication, divine expression, the process of making one's thoughts or feelings known. You know, I'm, I'm, pushing that age too and you know we go through I'm a, I'm kind of a trekking and I do remember uh there in the second version of Star Trek they had a person who could actually read your mind and that's kind of why I brought out the attributes of God because it we don't have that that gift we don't have that attribute of God we have got to begin to use our words the word is the act of speaking and the thing spoken, communication. If thou don't tell me what it is she's trying to get across to me, I can't read her mind. I can't know what it's saying. She has to communicate with me. She has to tell me what's going on. So I went over and I wrote down some things that we should know when it comes to the word and when it comes to not just the word of God, but when it comes to us talking. This is not an exhaustive list, but this is just what God gave me. Number one, the words have created power. In Genesis 1, I'm going to give you 1, 3, 6, 9, 11, 14, 20, 26. It said, and God said. He did not create the world without saying. He spoke the world into existence. Right. He didn't think it. It wasn't a thing. It That's wasn't right. a pop of your finger. Right. It wasn't a, a, a bow in my head. It wasn't, a, it wasn't even a motion. Right. It was words. And when he spoke, the Holy Ghost moved. Come on. Come on. We got to understand that when we speak words, they, they have life. They have power. And they're going to do one thing or another. And because we're made in his image, it says he, he created us in his image. That's right. We have that same capability. Yes, because he's our heavenly father, you have attributes, you have characteristics on, of your parents. Yes, we have characteristics of God. Amen. And one of them is we have created power in our words. I, I've heard people speak a lot of negative things and sometimes you'll hear about an athlete came up in a family that heard a lot of neg negative and he was able to overcome it. But then you'll hear that other person who never was able to overcome the negative things he heard in his life. I think, Pastor, that if that teacher hadn't told you it wasn't no black veterinarian that, that you was being a veterinarian today. I think it makes a difference in what we say and how, how we say it. One of the things that I said coming up as a child, I said it all the time, I want four children, two boys and two girls. I mean, I said it all the time. My mama had four. I said, I want four children and all stuff. But I want two boys and two girls. Well, after Karen came along, I decided, me and my husband decided, that was it. You know, that was a child that spoke that. But that was it. We was, as grown-ups, you begin to look at things differently. But lo and behold, 
The words that I spoke so much as a child had to come to pass, and a genesis had to come forth. And now, I, I can't see my life without her, without all four of them. Each one will bring so much richness to my life, but you just, you know, a lot of people say, well, you do. I had my tubes tied, y'all. I'm just going to tell you. I really wasn't planning on having another child. But God, because of my words, because he's trying to show us wow. his creative power, wow. the power in what we say. And a lot of times we take it lightly. But I did. And he reminded me of that. He said she had to come forth. The day she was born, Clarice was there. She said, Becky, it's something about it. It's something about it. So she had to come forth because of the words that I spoke. Romans 4 and 17 says, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him who he believed, even God, who quickened the dead and caused those things which be not as though they were. When God said light be, it was not there. But it was. And he says, even that he did it, he want us to begin to do it when it comes, comes to his word and things that are going on in our life. Another thing words do, believe it or not, it's, it's a part of salvation. People say, well, how is that a part of salvation? First of all, you have to confess. Confess is talking. It's, it's, it's saying something. You have to actually pray. And it's, that's not, it's not just a thought. It's more than just a thought. You have to express and communicate to God that I accept you and your sacrifice that you did. And everything you do, I believe you are and that Jesus is. So it's, it's an acceptance. And I notice a lot of times pastors and different ministers, when they minister and somebody come up to be saved, they'll tell them. Go tell two or three people what happened to you. Communication. We're sinning. We're not letting the enemy begin to snatch it from us. The uh, Amplified Translation of Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, Because if you acknowledge and confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and in your heart believe, adhere to, trust in, and rely on the truth that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, adheres to, trusts in, and relies on Christ. And so is justified, declared righteous, acceptable to God. Listen to this, and it says, And with the mouth he confesses, declares openly, and speaks out freely his faith, and confirms his salvation. So we have to open our mouths. Another thing about the word that God gave us, he said you can decree a thing. You can declare something. You can do it. Decree means to decide. And as I was looking it up, in one part of the Bible, it says to snatch. It says decree means to snatch. And it may be some things we need to go and decree so we can snatch them from the enemy. Take them back to us. Bring things that are ours back. It's time now for us letting the Lord, letting the devil sit and beat up on us. And we're praying and asking God to do it. And he said, I gave you the way to do it. There is a way. I've given you my word. Use it. He said, don't just be hearers of the word. So many of us, and I can say as to that at times, we got a whole lot of word in us. We listen to everybody all time, all day, all night. You can listen to them on your job, in your car. It ain't just, uh, now you ain't just got to wait to get a tape or a CD or come to church. My cell phone, I can play it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. He said, I've loaded you down with knowledge. Let's look and use the knowledge. In one of my classes, as I was uh, taking a class, and it, for some reason, it gave us the definition of learn. And it says, learning is a change in behavior acquired through experience. This is how my book uh, defined it. 
And when I listened to it, when I read it the first time, I said, huh? I read it again. I had to read it three times to fully digest what it was saying. And it says, learning is a change in behavior. If we are learning things, we're supposed to put action behind what we learn. It's no longer that I have all of this knowledge and I'm not using it. Acquired knowledge needs to be a change in our life. If I learn that coffee is bad for me, I can't drink coffee anymore. And if I learn that I can beat up on the enemy by speaking the word of God, hey, y'all, we need to start doing that every day. Yeah. Yeah. We're not giving, giving them too much power. Yeah. Yeah. The decree, Job 22 and 28 says, Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. It's established unto you. And the light shall shine upon thy ways. You know, a lot of times, uh, there's a particular scripture and one of my co-workers was, we was quoting this particular scripture. She said, I need you to get the rest of the scripture because sometimes we take it because that's the point we want to make. But sometimes you have to get the full yeah. thing, on, the yeah. full, the whole full, yeah. full, all of everything that God has. He says, and it shall be established. It's not just we are decreeing. When you decree and you're basing it on the word of God, it's going to be done. It's not, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. It's not if, it's when. And then your light will shine. And then that begins. When your light shines, you become a better witness to the world about the goodness of our God. We tell people all the time, God is good, God is good, God loves you, God is good. But the world, the way they look at it, they say, I don't see it, I'm hurting, how is God good? I have needs, how is God good? Because we're not declaring and being witnesses. And then once we're a witness, then we go and we do something about it. He said, how have I known you? I fed the sick. I went and visited them in the hospitals. I went and visited them in the prison. We got to we gotta begin to build about our father's business. And as Sister Gloria Hope always says, if you can't go, send go. Sometimes we can't go. I may not can go, but I can send. I can, I can give some money. I may not can do this, but I can help. I can volunteer my time. You know, I uh, once was telling Pastor, I said, I know we have wonderful evangelists, and their heart is for the people, and they love to go out and minister. Brother Aaron is one. Love to go out and minister and talk to people. I kept telling Pastor, I said, but that's not me. And I began to tell him, I said, my heart goes out for all of those that have been saved, but we seem to be loose. That it needed to be something so that we didn't lose so many that came in. Yeah. And Pastor began to tell me, he said, that's backdoor ministry. Yeah. So all of it is a part. So if everybody do their part, I may not be the one that can go out. Yeah. But if I can send you, if I can pay for you, if I can just help you in a way, get your material together, yeah. drive you, whatever I can do that can help you, God attributes to your account. Yeah. It goes on your account. Yeah. The other thing, the word builds faith. Yeah. And, and a lot of times we don't understand that because we think, you know, the Lord said he's given to every man the measure of faith. And we all do have faith. But sometimes it seems like our faith is weak because, you know, we have to fight a good fight of faith. And, and, and when you don't know what the word says, sometimes your fight is weak. We say, we say what we have instead of saying what God says we have or what God has made available to us. Romans 10 and 17 says that, so then faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So without the people to tell you, what's going on, you don't get it. So sometimes it'll build your faith. The more you come out here, you know, we talk about the word said, for the sake not the assembling of yourselves together as some do. What is it for? It is to build our faith. 
Some of us are weak. Some of us are hurting. And sometimes when you come and you can hear, you can hear just, you may only hear one word, one sentence. You may hear one song and that one song ministers to you so that it just begins your faith and you're able to keep going. I can go just a little while longer. Another thing, and this is the big thing, and I think this one and the next point, and I'm going to kind of combine them, are one of the points that God really wanted us to get out of here, is that we need to use the word of God to fight. We need to speak it. I can't think. Uh, I can't think it and the devil going to leave me. I can't think it. It's not a thinking thing. Now, I do know we need to bring our thoughts captive to Christ. We need to bring them all in. But at the same time, I can't think it out loud. I have to say it. So, in Matthew, the fourth chapter, the third through the fourth verse, the seventh and the tenth verse, if you go back and read Matthew, the fourth chapter, you will begin to get it. If you know the story, Jesus had just been baptized and he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And during that time, as he was led in the wilderness, he went 40 days without food. And the devil knows you from being familiar with you when you're at your weakest point. Yes, yeah. And he thinks yeah. He thought Jesus is hungry. Now is a good time. So he decided to try him. He decided to tempt him. He thought maybe I can get him on my side. Because we know the devil don't care about you. His whole thing is to try to rise up over God. And we know that one's already been defeated. But Jesus, each time that third with the fourth the seventh and the tenth, Jesus said, it is written. Yeah. He didn't come at him with his own yeah. thoughts. Yeah. He came at him with God had already yeah. given us. Yeah. He said it's written. And listen, you can't fight it if you don't know it. So I'm telling you, it's two parts to this. You got to know. You got to get in the Word. You got to begin to see what God has given us. And every time the devil tells you, I hurt, I am healed. Yeah. Every time, he, and I I ain't gonna tell you it's gonna go away immediately. I don't have these fights myself. But I can tell you that if you continue to say it over and over and over and over and over again, that the devil gonna understand that you got it. Yeah. And he'll leave you. Yeah. For different people, Amen. it's different times. Right. Some people may can say it because of your faith the first time, but some of us, we may have to say it. Yeah. I may have to do it a hundred days in a row. I may have to say it for a whole year, but one of these days, if you keep declaring you healed by his stripes, one of these days you're going to wake up and you're going to say, what happened to that pain? You're going to be able to jump and shout, Sister Serena. You're going to be able to say, woo, I don't have that pain anymore. Don't give up and don't contradict yourself. Anytime the pain comes, don't say, I know I wouldn't heal from that. Or I know, so don't say it. Continue to keep, continue to be positive. Continue to keep your, your confession. Don't change your confession because of a new pain. Don't change the word. The word don't change. It's, it's powerful. As I told you, it's always been. It always will be. Stay on it. If you stay on it, you're on a sure foundation. You don't have to worry about it giving. Some days we don't know. Even though we, we look at this concrete and we say it's good, but it'll crack. The word won't crack. The word won't crumble. The word won't give out on you. The word will always be able, you'll always be able to count on it. It'll always be there. It won't change. It's the same. Ephesians 6, 17 says, I want to read it in the Message Bible. Be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get. Every weapon God has issued so that when it's all over but the shouting, you 
still be on your feet. Yeah. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation are more than words. Yeah. Learn how to apply them. Yeah. You need them throughout your life. God's word is an indispensable yeah. weapon. Yeah. It's indispensable. Yeah. That means we can't do it without it. If we cast that aside, the other stuff don't help. His word is indispensable. The last one that I would like to leave you with is the tongue has power. And you know, this is familiar passage of scripture. Most of y'all quote it. We quote it a lot. I do. And uh, it's Proverbs 18 and 21. And the correct, way, the correct way it was written, it says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Yeah. Now listen, that's another one of those scriptures where you got to take not just the part you want there. You got to take that second part. It said you shall eat the fruit thereof. Amen. Uh, I googled that particular scripture for some reason or another. I don't know why, but God had me to do it. And it says according to this proverb, one should take care to watch his or her words carefully. Amen. And be slow to speak. Uh -huh. My God. Understand the power of speech. Yeah. There is life and death in words. Yes, sir. If you love to talk, yes, right. you will eat the fruit of your words. Amen. Perhaps you know the phrase, he will be eating his words. Words can condemn. They can bring life. They can bring death. Yeah. Even as me speaking, so many years ago I wanted two boys and two girls. That was already, it was going to be, it was just a matter of when. So even if you speak negative words, I hear people say, that makes me sick. Do you know what you're saying? Watch what you're saying. And then you wonder why you're staying sick, why things are going on. Because of what you're saying, you are saying what you want. Quit saying that. Start speaking life. Start speaking what God said. Proverbs 8.21, the New Living Translation says, The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. You know, Galatians 6 and 7 says we reap what we sow. And a lot of times people don't fully understand that. We, we understand it in essence to planting uh, flowers and planting uh, tomatoes or corn or zucchini or whatever we, we're going to plant. We understand that if we plant an apple tree, we understand that we will eventually get apples. But you have to know everything you do and everything you say is a seed. And it, it plants something. It plants something. Some things are, are taking a long time to come up. I think they said a bamboo. It takes it about 10 or 11 years. They said you can plant it. You will not see anything. Anything. So in our natural sense, we'll think, well, that thing is dead. It ain't going to come up. They say about the 11 year, it grows so much in that one, but it's been growing the whole time. It's been planting its roots. It's been going down deep, getting a firm setting. So it's not gonna be shaking. So when it comes forth, it's gonna be there. It's gonna take a lot to kill it. Because the roots go deep. So that whole time that you don't see what's going on underneath, it's, it's working. Pastor was the first one that ever gave the illustration to me that I paid attention to of the ice of an iceberg. You know, you heard about them in school and you've seen them. And if you look at an iceberg in the picture, what you see on top is smaller than what's underneath. That's right. So sometimes we're looking at what we see, but you don't know what it's doing underneath the surface. You don't know what it's doing underground. Sometimes we like, God ain't moving fast enough, but you don't know what he's doing underground in the unseen. In that world, when it's coming forth, it may take it a while. That may be why you have to say it for a year or two years or why you have to say it because it takes a while for it to grow its roots and then go deep. And then we ain't gonna be swayed. We ain't gonna be moved. That's right. James 3 and 10 says, Out of the mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things are not be so. 
our not so to be. We as Christians, we as born again believers, we are going to have to start paying more attention to what we say. And then we've got to know when to say it. You know, one of the biggest things that I notice in life is that you got to understand whether it's time for me to fight or if it's time for me to be quiet. Mm -hmm. And in this case, we are being quiet when we need to be speaking. It's, it's past time for us to be quiet. We got to know what we need to go. I, you know, some people, they be ready to fight quick. And then some people, they never want to fight. You can push them and push them and push them. And you got to know. So we got to know. If we ain't sure, go to the Lord. But if he got a word to say about it, you know, we, we've been saying this for years. Whatever you're going through, find the word for that situation. There is a word for it. If you can't find it, just call somebody who you know like to research. They'll help you find it. We can find it. And use it. Use it in your situation. That's why I say you got to get in the word. Start making your notes. Hey, this is a good scripture. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. Anytime something's going on and I got a need and if you go back to the Hebrew, that says I shall not lack. Yeah, yeah. So I shall not lack. Yeah. So we, we got to go back to it. And I'll reiterate. Stop saying what you have and say what the word says. Whose report are you going to believe? You've got to say what the word says. Isaiah 55 and 11 says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So even though it went out, you didn't see it. God said it's going to prosper. It's going to prosper. It's going to, just like that iceberg was, it's, it's happening. Sometimes he has things that he have to move in place. And you have to know God uses people. God ain't going to magically make nothing come. If you if you need a blessing, if you got things you're going, God uses people. It's time for us to get to the point where we stop being just hearers of the word and be doers. Because somebody is waiting for us to be obedient to the word of God. Somebody is waiting. Somebody needs what we have. Prince Philip. Y'all probably heard this in the news. Queen of England, her husband, died about 10, 11 days ago. And they said he died at age 99. And they said one time he said he couldn't imagine anything worse than reaching 100 years old. He spoke his death. He decreed that he would not live to be 100 years old. Because he said he just couldn't see living beyond 99. 100, he thought it was just going to be, I don't know where his mindset was, but he thought it was going to be awful. So he, he couldn't, he had already spoken. And not only, he spoke it enough for people to hear it too. Listen, build your spiritual vocabulary. Build your arsenal. Get in the word. Learn the will of God. And know all the benefits he had for us in the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Hebrew 5 talks about being unskillful, inexperienced, ignorant in the word of righteousness. Saints, that ought not be us. It's a, it comes to a time the writer of Hebrews was trying to talk about the order of Melchizedek. He was going deep, but he realized they were still on the elementary thing. He couldn't even tell them what he wanted to tell them because they didn't have enough information. They were in another place. He was on another level. We got to get out. We got to learn the word. We got to know. We got to be able to build our arsenal. So anytime the enemy come against you, you can cast it down. It's something that I sent a text out to uh, some people back. It's been probably nine months or so. And I was telling them what they were talking about was going to happen. And one of the three people that I texted to sent back, and instead of saying, oh, what are we going to do? They spoke the word. And see, we all have to be encouraged to remember. They spoke it, and they decreed and declared that it would come to nothing. And it wasn't nothing. But they spoke it. All of these storms that they've been predicting, you got some places where they hit and some places where they don't. And they'll say, well, the weatherman missed it. No, the weatherman didn't miss it. 
He didn't miss the word. The people of God was decreeing. They were saying, peace, be still. You can't come near here. You can't do it. You can't come here. We got to know what we say. Jesse the planner said that when Katrina hit, before it hit, he had already began to decree and to speak. He said, but it got so hyped up that he got to a point where he couldn't come against it. He didn't like it then, but he said he could it affected his community, so his community wasn't affected by it. It didn't bother them. Why? Because he knew the word of God and he knew what to say. He can't say. One minister that I listened to, he never talked about coronavirus. He always just said this thing, this thing. He never would give it more power with his words. Sometimes we have made things worse by what we're saying. Y'all, we got to watch it. Revelation 12 and 11 in the Amplified Edition says, and they have overcome, yeah. conquered yeah. him yeah. by means of the blood of the lamb yeah. and by the utterance, yeah. utterance means they had to speak, of their testimony. Yeah. For they did not love and cling to life even when faced with death, holding their lives cheap till they had to die for their witnesses. So, I will tell you as we, as I get ready to close, watch our words, but let's begin to fight the enemy. The biggest thing I want you to do is begin to fight, quit saying, the doc, quit saying what they say. They say, I got, I ain't going to say that, I'll say the doctor said that, but I don't receive anything that they say anymore. If they come with, and, and listen, I'm not being ignorant, it's because I know how to pray if I go. Yeah. And, and, and if you're not there yet, I'm not condemning you if you go. But no, you don't have to accept their, their, their report. You can say no, because God said I'm here. I understand this is what's going on. I understand that you may be hurting now. I understand that you got things going on. I understand that. And, but, but, we got to fight. But God, God has given us a way out. He has given us the answer. This, I want to close with this, and this is, uh, well, it's actually two verses, but Mark 11, 23 and 24. It says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say, whosoever shall say yeah, yeah. unto this mountain, yeah. be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not die in his heart, but shall believe those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Thank you. We will have what we say. If you get nothing else out of this, know that life and death is in the power of the tongue. You're speaking, either speak life or speak death. It, it, it may take a while, because I'm still catching myself during the day, during time. Val may have to say something, a sister may have to say something, somebody else may have to say something. Like, why did you say that? And I have to correct it. And she said, no, it's not me. And say the right thing. So sometimes it, it takes a while. And, and it takes getting the word, and it takes listening, and it takes practice. We got to practice this. You got to practice every time a, a pain hit. You got to practice every time they say what you can't do. You got to practice every time they say uh, it, it shouldn't be done. Ain't no black man uh, being no veterinarian. We got practice to know. That's not what my God say. My God say, I can do all things through Christ. You got to know the word. I'm more than a conqueror. I can do this. I can do this. The word says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. As we begin to speak the word, it will begin to tell God that we have faith in that area and it will arise and God will reward us. Yeah. Amen. Y'all be blessed. He is one to be exalted. Sing unto the Lord. Come on, sing unto the Lord. Open up your mouth and begin to tell him. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be worshipped. He's worthy.